<laughs> and uh, hello. It, I, I said, I ask you all, those of you over here, to move over here and you over here, over here. And about that time, there's a little old lady sitting on the second pew, and I heard her say, I ain't moving for nobody. <laughs> this is not going to look good in the morning paper. Pentecostal preacher goes crazy on fat old lady. Throws her across the church. Don't tell me you're not going to move. But the Holy Ghost helped me tremendously. And I said, I'm going to ask you one more time. Would all of you over here please move over here? And so here they go. They started moving. Except her. I said, all right, now that we've done that, let's read our text. I never got to the first word of the text. That place blew sky high. I mean, it went crazy. I never seen anything like it. They were in the floor laughing. They were crawling down the center aisle. Forget Toronto blessing. This broke loose in Oklahoma. I was like, my God. I mean, the pastor's up there. He's laughing in the spirit. He's, he's having a great time. Revival broke out in the church. And all that it took to break out of the church is just for folks to move from one side of the building to the other. You got to be kidding. You know what? You'd be surprised what kind of traditions we get locked in. Well, I, I've never done it that way before. And, and we've never quite sung it that way before. And, and we, we've never used that before. And, and that's never happened here before. And, and, all, and what we do is... What we do is... Oh, Jesus, help me, God, is we keep our understanding of past times. Oh, this is the way that God did it back in 1964. This is the way that God did it back in 1978. This is the way, and we have understanding of that times, and we're still trying to do what we knew to do then in this time. I got news for you. It's not then. It's a different time. I'm not talking about changing our message. Let me get that settled right here first day flat-footed. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. It's repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, the filling of the Holy Ghost, evidence by speaking in tongues, and living a holy, godly, separated life. That is the message of the church. Not talking about moving off of that. But we're trying to get the job done with using the methods and the understanding that we had years ago. It's not going to work. You're dealing with a generation that doesn't comprehend that. What we need is the Holy Ghost, not just to give us understanding of the times, but what we ought to be doing. Um, it don't take much spiritual direction to keep following a path you've been on for 40 years. Just follow the path. You don't have to pray. You don't have to seek God. You don't have to lock yourself in a prayer call and say, God, what's your will and direction for the service tonight? Just keep following the path. Just keep following the path. Well, this is how we've always evangelized. We've handed people tracks and, and we put them out on the street. If we finally got them guilty enough, you know, go win a soul, you're going to hell. That's a good way to start an evangelistic program. Then when you knock on the door, you're there out of guilt, not burden. I want to invite you to the United Church, Pastor God, we were at home the corner. Why don't you come visit Everything we got is right in there. Praise God. Well, nobody wants this. Nobody's hungry. Nobody wants what we got. I'm fixing to preach myself crazy. 
They just don't want it. Can I give you a little idea? Why don't you go lock yourself in prayer somewhere until God sets you on fire? And then when you walk out, it's not a trap you put in their hand. It's a Holy Ghost inferno that touches them. And brother, when the Holy Ghost and fire touches them, they'll know something happened. I don't, I don't want to get to the fire yet. I, I'll get to that this week. I don't want to get to the fire yet. You know, guys, I'm sorry. I hate to disappoint you. But if you're waiting on headquarters to come up with a program that's going to take your city, sorry. Now I'll go a step further. If you think you're going to hire somebody to come in to become your evangelistic coordinator and you put it all on him it's not going to happen he'll win a few souls but when he leaves it leaves I went over real good praise God we, 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 we've complicated this thing I, I feel a meddling spirit now praise God we've complicated this thing so much I have people call me Brother Morgan mm -hmm. why don't you come preach for me Okay, I want you to come tell us how to have revival. I don't have to come preach to tell you that. Get drunk and stay drunk. <laughs> well, that went over real good. See? Oh, I shouldn't. Brother Johnson, straighten all this out tonight. <laughs> See, first of all, you cannot whip a drunk man. You can't do it. You get a drunk man, hit him with a ball bat. Blood's running. And he goes, if I ever come to and figure out you hit me, I might be mad. See, see, I feel like I need to go back into your family tree. See, we've entered into an era <laughs> of Pentecost where we want to be sophisticated and our act together. I mean, after all, we all got palm pilots now. And our computers... I even got one, believe it or not. Well, actually, I got one borrowed. It's my brother's. He said he's going to sell it to me, but he went back on his word. <laughs> but I was making the money he was. I'd just give it to a poor, struggling evangelist. <laughs> How many of you vote that he ought to do that? Can I see your hands? You'd hate to disappoint these people. Actually, I don't want that one. I want you to buy me a new one, Brady. <laughs> now, see, where'd my bottle go? See, we, we, we really don't want folks to know that our forefathers were a bunch of drunks. And we're trying real hard to move away from that. See, you want to be a social drinker. Your forefathers, they were guzzlers. <laughs> I 
you, you, you want to hold your little pinky out there just right. Just kind of. Ooh. 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 I got a little tingle. Mm. Boy. Mm. I felt the presence of the Lord. I leave some places and they say, my, didn't we have church? And I'm saying, you call that having church? Boy, we had a move of God tonight. I'm in the wrong club. I, I, I'm, I'm among some sippers. You know, you don't want to get enough because you're afraid you might get arrested on the way home for intoxication. So just, you know. And then you get each in your pocket, you go, ah. can you smell it? Ah. Don't want nobody to know I'm one of them. Ah. Let's keep it here that our fa- <laughs> let's keep it here. Let's impress them with our oratory. Let's impress them with our PowerPoint presentations. I believe in all that. Let's impress them with our sophistication and our debonair. Let's impress them with all this stuff. Let's keep it hid that we believe in new wine. But your forefathers, your daddies, come staggering out of an upper room. They didn't sip, they guzzled. city comes in what's this what in the world see hey buddy go get me about three or four more of those we're fixing to have a good holy ghost guzzling fit see see we're trying to do all this sober we're trying to comprehend the ways of God and the understanding of God through our intellect and our logic. We're trying to put it in a program and fit it into a traditional box. It's not coming that way. It's coming when you come out of the box and say, okay, God, I'm not going to do this out of here. I'm going to do this under the influence of the Holy Ghost. It's not by might nor is it by power, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord. Thank God for your buildings. Thank God for our programs. Thank God for all the technology. Thank God for all that wonderful stuff. But I'm telling you, if that's all you got to offer, the world has that to offer. Come here, Jeff. Come here, Jeff. Hurry. I know that's hard for Morgans to do, but hurry. <laughs> Come here. See, Jeff and I, we, we, we're trying to look nice here today and be kind of sophisticated but see if I could take you to some of our family reunions I'd have to meet introduce you to some of my uncles and cousins they don't look like Jeff and I <laughs> matter of fact when Jeff was about that high my mom couldn't find him and she went into a panic because the worst thing that could happen is to lose a kid a bunch of, amongst a bunch of drunk Morgans. And so she sent a scouting party out after him. And, <laughs> and she found him over with one of my other uncles. Just in time to see him say, turn it up and drink it, Jeff. I don't remember any of this. You have to repent for lying now. Just in time to see Jeff. I have to introduce to you to some uncles. I see you don't know that as long as you see us here. Them same uncles would go get in a bar and get drunk. <laughs> 